I want to show you how to sharpen a crosscut saw. I get this request often enough. We've done rip saws and most of the saws will be sharpened for a rip cut because much of our work as furniture makers is for rip cutting, not cross cutting. But on a building site, on a construction site, you probably will do more cross cutting than rip cutting. Now that we've got a resharpenable saw, we can cross cut with it. We can resharpen it in about four or five minutes. Most people, especially carpenters, should be able to sharpen their saw in three or four minutes. So what I've done here is I've just taken two sticks of, um, of wood, two inches by one inch. I've put a screw through here and between the two pieces I've put a washer that just takes up the kerf or the thickness of the plate. So when I slide this in here, I can squeeze it together in the vise and I'm on my way. But first of all, I want to show you a little bit that we need to discuss here. What's the difference between a rip cut a saw and a cross cut? So I'm going to bring these two pieces of steel up side by side so that you can see the actual teeth as you might find them in a saw, you would find them in a saw. In most western saws we have a rip cut saw pattern and a cross cut. In this top one here we have a cross cut saw and the bottom one we have a rip cut saw. Let's just look at the rip cut on its own first. If you're looking at the side of this plate here, you, can see, you can't see that there are two facets on either side of it that are square. That's because they are square to the length of the long axis of the saw plate. When you look at the cross cut saw on the other hand, you can see on this one, you don't see anything on this side and nothing on this side. But when you come to the adjacent tooth, you can see the side of this one and the side of this one. The same when you move along this way and this way. Skip a tooth, go to this one and this one. This means that these teeth have been brought to a pinnacle point. It, we've actually done the same on these that you don't see the side to, you just can't see it from your side of the saw. So you can see how this point and this point, this point and this point, are the actual cutting points rather than chisel teeth and that's the difference between cross cut teeth. When you see the teeth from the top you start to see how this dynamic works or you will actually learn that through the sharpening of the saws. So that's what we're going to sharpen now. I want to show you how to sharpen a cross cut saw to a particular pattern. Here's my cross cut saw. It needs touching up. You've been using it for two or three months. You've been cross cutting with it and it needs sharpening. So we line this up in the holder just like this and then clamp it in the vise like this. Now I'm taking, oops, not quite level. I'm taking, I'm going to start at this handle end of the saw and what we're going to do, the teeth on a saw plate are staggered like this. We're going to stagger the teeth like this. and They're already set to that. When you buy a saw, the teeth are going to be set like this. That means that one set of teeth are moving, if you put it in the plate this way, one set are moving away from you, the other set is coming towards you. What we want to do is sharpen the back of the tooth that's leaning away from us. So in this case here, I'm sharpening this is the very first tooth here. I'm sharpening the back of this tooth. Then I skip a gullet and I go to the next one. On this one, I'm going to sharpen the back of the tooth leaning away from me. Therefore, because the file cuts two facets at once, I'm going to be sharpening the, the front of the tooth that's actually leaning towards me in the same stroke. Let's take a look at that first. I'm going to skip the back of this tooth here. I'm going to skip the first tooth. This is the one that's leaning towards, away from it, and the, or this is the back of the tooth leaning away from me. Can you see this angle here? This is about 65 degrees. And let me show you what you might want to do is set something like this at the 65 degrees and then run some lines onto a piece of cardstock like this, flip it over and do the same again. Or you could simply put the lines directly onto here. Just do them every one inch or so across here and that will give you the angle that you want and then you can go in again here and do exactly the same. That will just give you 
angles to line up the saw, the saw file to as you're filing. So watch what happens here. I skip that tooth. I'm into the gullet here. This is the back of the tooth leaning away from me. That's on, on this side of the, the file. So I angle this. If you want to line it up with something like this, then you will be lining it up with the original pattern on the saw, on the fleam. So there we go. So we take one, two, one, two, one, two. So we're skipping every other tooth from one end of the saw to the other. The file is level across from front, from my hand to the second hand, the file is level across. But when you look from the top, looking down onto this, you'll see I'm trying to follow this pattern, move it along a little bit, keep it in line with the back of, whoops, back of here. So I'll keep this cardstock. I don't really need that anymore. And I don't need to get hung up on this angle because the edge is going to be sharp and the pinnacle tooth is going to be sharp. So don't get hung up on it. If you find yourself drifting, losing concentration on that angle, it's not going to affect the, the, the saw too much. Just have something to aim for when you're doing this. And I think that will help you to focus on what you're really trying to do is get the file deep into the gullet, follow the present angle of the saw, all the way through. See, I can feel myself drifting off a little bit, so I've corrected it. This is where it would be handy. It's much handier right on the, on the, um, the holder, really, but this works too. It's working great. I'm bringing this back into the main body of the vise just because I can see it more clearly. It's more solid in here. And I can see from here, I can see, but when you've got a saw that's been used for a month or a few days even, the steel oxidizes on the teeth. And, and so you can see from the new shine where you finished off and where you're starting over again. <laughs> to avoid can you see how this is aligning up with this um, what you want to avoid is going too far this way and making that pinnacle tooth too thin having too uh, angled a point uh, and so on so there are things that you look for to correct yourself that so where do we go now this is the next thing now you've got used to fouling at that angle you have to do an exact opposite so we take this out flip it over bring it into the vise and now it becomes less comfortable because we just got used to that other angle and bang there you go yeah you got to get used to another angle so this time we're going to be filing the back of the tooth, leaning away from us again. So this time we're going in here, like this. So check that. So one, two. Taking the, the same length of file stroke, taking the same weight, keeping the same angle, means that you're creating each tooth equally to one another. If you took one stroke off one and three off another, 
Then you'd have what we call sergeants and sappers, or calves and cows. That means you have a big one or a little one, not much good really. So develop good habits now. <coughs> Ah, you hear that? I went in the wrong gullet and I took a foul stroke. Do I do anything about it? Forget it. Just move on. You made a mistake. Don't do it again. Good, strong, firm stroke. Moving along the plate, it feels more awkward at the moment, but by the time I get to this end, my body will be adjusted to it. I lost my tooth. Good, feels nice and spiky. Looks nice. I'm looking for that gullet, the last gullet I did. This saw has um, seven points to the inch and there is a decision you have to make whether you do enough cross cutting to warrant owning a saw just for cross cutting but the bigger the teeth get, say a five, four, six, seven point saw, you really do need to have a dedicated saw for cross and then one for rip cut. So those are the, once you get finer than ten points per inch, so you can stay with a rip cut for cross cutting all the way through so 10 12 14 16 18 20 you can just sharpen for a rip cut it works perfectly well but as the teeth get bigger they're taking bigger bites you need to have a dedicated uh, saw Oops. did it again the one we wanted that was the last one so now we have a crosscut saw sharpened ready for action and this works great so this would be a saw that I might use on bigger pieces of wood I might crosscut I don't know two inches and thicker still you can crosscut thinner than that let's take a look let's see what we got here It's definitely easier to cross cut with a cross cut saw. And the nice thing is, you can sharpen this for a hundred years and it'll just go down in thickness, but it'll still be big enough, wide enough, rigid enough to cut wood. So yeah, 100 years saw, perfect.